Cinematic and real-time VFX is becoming more and more accessible. With some tricks and compositing techniques, even assets made for games can turn into something that feels much bigger. And beyond that, we can use the latest tech to render high fidelity and realistic visuals while working, animating, and lighting in real time. Let's jump straight into the video and explore a few key strategies and ideas when it comes to real-time VFX that have helped me get down and creative even as a beginner. So the NVIDIA RTX A1000 that I have, along with the Dell Precision laptop, allows me to create complex scenes, expanding even what is possible. And this video is sponsored by them, and I will share what it's been like to work with workstations like that, but more about them later on in the video. So right off the bat, establishing when and where. So for example, being strategic of when to use CG versus practical and a mixture of other techniques and knowing where your reasonable limits are and using that as your baseline. Not only as your baseline, but sometimes to your advantage. Can some of your story even be developed in one place on location and extend its world with the use of environments? And then what happens if you want to start adding animation and characters? Now this leads to the why. Uh, why does that scene need an effect in the first place? And which part of the effect is most important to get right to convey that story beat or that idea. So movies are communication basically. So prioritize what information you need to show and what you can omit and use that to your advantage so that you can actually focus not only your composition, but also your time priority and how you manage that. Not even just in terms of how much time you give to each shot, but within each shot, how much time are you dedicating to each part of the screen? So let's actually jump into some real applicable real time tips. The quickest way to make something realistic is the level of details. If you look at real life, it's very complex, has a lot of stuff. So what makes something realistic is details. And obviously that is sometimes the hardest thing to handle from computers, from GPUs. The more stuff you render on screen, the harder it is to render that stuff in real time or even render it at all. And so when we're talking about accessibility, it's important to hit those key points in a way that's not super taxing for your system and that with just a few little ideas, you can actually stretch what the engine can even give you. One of the easiest ways to add texture is by adding decals. This is literally my cheat code to adding details to buildings to literally all of my environments. Decals can be really powerful. It's just basically overlays that you can add in 3D that bring out certain details that maybe certain meshes or certain models don't come with. So if you wanna age certain buildings, add these different leaks, uh, add cracks and imperfections in, in the concrete, even to break the seamlessness or the tileability of some materials sometimes this helps a lot with that too so the next thing is focus your efforts on what the camera focuses on so we kind of mentioned this in terms of how you can prioritize your time but when it comes to actually building out the environment doing the effects having a basic idea of the coverage that the camera is going to have you know obviously there's a lot of ground to cover but if you don't have to work out every single street and alley with the same level of detail of where your main blocking or your main scene is, it can really help you focus your efforts into those areas. Now, another thing, speaking of cameras, is to create realistic camera movements in Unreal Engine cinematics. There's a whole range of how you can basically track your camera in, in real life and bring it into the engine. Uh, but I'm going to do something a lot more simple than that. And I've even used some packs that are pretty inexpensive that have pre-built camera movements that you can simply add as an animation into your sequencer for whichever camera and it'll basically play out that recorded data of a real camera or that animation that is basically going to give you like a real human operated feeling camera in your scene in Unreal Engine. This is a huge time saver and it brings out that realism that can even help hide some of the, the telltale signs that this is a rendered image or that some of the assets are even at a game level. Now, another thing to make something feel realistic is lighting. Uh, light and shadow is basically what makes an image. So getting that right, getting in a way that feels in the same way that real life lighting behaves is really important to communicate something effectively and to make it believable. Sometimes you can combine multiple light sources to get a realistic bounce or to get the light to behave in a way that you wanted to that sometimes isn't even realistic it's just what you want it to look like because of 
the cinematic lens that you are viewing the world through. Lighting can really bring out so much more detail in terms of shadows, in terms of how materials react. And so getting even the directionality of it is super important. So spend as much time as you can in the lighting stage because not only is it establishing the mood and it has to be obviously compatible and coherent with the story that you're developing, but it can be a great way to really elevate your scene and hide a lot of the limitations. And now speaking of limitations, it's nice when the gear that you use actually doesn't limit you in your creative process. And this brings us to the sponsor of this video, Dell and the new Precision 5470, which is simply amazing. And what I love about the Dell Precision lineup in general is the very close and strong collaboration they have with NVIDIA for the GPU and the latest Intel processors for the CPU to bring the most powerful and optimized workflow to real-time graphics. And creating scenes from scratch all the way to highly detailed finished products is a creative joy since I'm almost never interrupted or slowed down from drops in frame rates or lags. And this was already my experience on the Dell PC workstation and felt the exact same experience on the much more portable Dell 5470 laptop. And just to be able to bring my Unreal projects with me is just amazing. And not only is the Dell 5470 fast, but it's also slim and it feels good to handle. The bezels are really thin, giving you the most screen real estate for the size. But most important of all, I can't stress enough what it's like to be able to take your work from the office on the go and still have the right amount of speed and power to get everything that you need done. From rooftop lounges to airplane cabins, I really felt like I had no lag and no limitation to where I could bring my work and what I could do. And that alone is amazing for my kind of workflow. So real-time VFX is a topic that's gonna be ever-growing. Uh, let me know what you guys think in the comments section below about real-time VFX or how some of the techniques that we kind of overviewed in this video could help you in your projects or ways that you would apply it in your filmmaking. Thanks again to Dell for sponsoring this video and I hope you really enjoyed it and you found some value out of it. My name is Chris Trini for Chris Carr and I'll see you next time.